so we've done direct indirect acquisition in the brokernomics context and now we're going into organic are we yeah um i think we're going to discuss the um, the, the organic way of uh, growing, and uh, and this one that uh, you can see, my, I I stop looking like a frog, and I, my my face uh, lit <laughs> lights up because <laughs> that's, that's what really gets me out of out of bed on a on a Monday morning. Um, so we've discussed that Darwinx does not do direct or indirect acquisition, partly out of vision, uh, partly out of reality, because yeah. that you know you can't have it both ways. You can't have your cake and eat it. So if you, if yeah. you choose not to, to be an agency only broker, it means you cannot pay introducers to bring you people who lose money. Yeah. Um, and instead, I'm going to focus on, on the organic element of, of, um, of acquiring customers. Okay. okay. And, and here, we're not going through, through a big exercise. To I can try. tell you really enjoy this one. Yeah, no, so we, we're going <laughs> you smile through. You know, for, for the last six, six or seven years, we've gone through various exercises to try and explain what Darwin X is, okay? And, and I think I'll, this, this might end up being a bit of a lengthy one. Uh, yeah, yeah, go for it. But, uh, but I really want to explain how the, you know, the, the, the genesis of Darwin X, uh, why Darwin X, and why we think that organic is the only way, okay? So Darwin X starts out with a freak. Uh, a freak is my, my brother. My brother's like a, <laughs> like a trader, and he, he loves the markets, like you know, anyone watching this thing. And, and he, he was looking for a business model, and uh, he didn't have one because he was a civil engineer. And in Spain, if you go to the Spanish regulator and you tell them, hey, I'm a civil engineer, and I've never worked in finance, but I want to manage third-party monies, you, know, <laughs> you don't want to be there when the guy responds to you. Um, <laughs> so we set out to build a, a viable business model for people who want to make a living by trading the markets. That's, you know, that's the, the why Darwin X from the, from the standpoint of a trader. And when we first got going with that, <clears throat> uh, and we want to do that legally, very importantly. So yeah. to do that legally, you have to be regulated. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want to charge investors for growing their capital, that you know there's a there's a there's a permission you need for that, which is managing investor money. Mm -hmm. And we went out and, and got that permission from the FCA in 2013. Okay. And the idea back then was to say, okay, well there are 800 MT4 brokers or a thousand whatever in the world, you know. Why on earth does the world need yet another, another MP4? empty four broker? Okay. <laughs> now, and this is because two Spaniards coming out of where we came from, we you know we didn't know the FX retail trading industry, and we thought you know brokers are respectable people. And uh, and then I went and I, I distinctly remember <laughs> this. I went to um, to the to I think it's called well the the forex magnets the forex magnets fair in Cyprus in 2013. Yeah. Uh, this is in Cyprus in. Uh, I mean, just to give you the picture, it's, it's basically, you know, Cyprus is a very nice place. Uh, there's the sea and so on. And then I start seeing very oddly good looking girls who don't <laughs> clearly work for brokers and they have, you know, very tight t-shirts. And, um, <laughs> and then, you know, there's this fancy car starting to come in and then I go, whoa, you know, is this... Yeah, all what these Euro-dollar traders, is, man. Is, is the, the, what are the Euro-dollar <laughs> traders, right? So, uh, well, you know, something's odd here because uh, my mission there was to go pitch to these brokers to a, a tool whereby they could improve their, their traders, uh, the, the, the traders' trading so that yeah. the traders could live longer. And surely that's, that's what they wanted. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I basically I pitched it to hell to all these brokers and I, 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 they weren't really interested. You know, like, so are you an IB? Are you going to bring me uh, customers? And like, well, no, what I'm going to try and do is make your customers trade better for the long run. Oh, and, really? Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that's what I did. And, uh, and uh, they, you know, it, you know, it wasn't, it didn't really work very well. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why I said, oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> so uh, it didn't really work very well. So, and then by that point, we had opened this website, which was about diagnosing a trader to become a better trader. That's, yeah. you know, the, the, what we pitched to those guys. And then our customers, and, and this is, you know, a, a long time friend like Lars, and the customers have become friends over the years. They basically told us, hey, guys, I actually trust you more than my Cyprus broker. Uh, and he said, and you should become your own broker. Um, so that was one. And then this the other- This is the trade slide days, right? This is the trade slide days. Darwin X was, didn't exist at this time. No, this was trade slide. We, we had got to the owl, but it was still trade slide. Yeah. And um, so that's that. And then on the other hand, we, we, we had hired like 15 developers uh, by then, and, and that cost a pretty penny. So our shareholders were saying, well, this is great, right? But uh, you know, we need, <laughs> at some point, we need to start making money. And then you put two and two together. It's like, okay, so I've built all this entire stack, which those brokers don't want. My 
users, not customers at the point, because they weren't paying us. They, they, they're saying they trust us more than their broker. Yeah. And this business model that we've concocted of introducing our users who don't want to go to the Cyprus guys anyhow and paying, giving away half our customers' revenues to a broker that doesn't really bring any value other than an MT4 license yeah. is a, is, you know, it's a pretty fucked up thing to be doing. <laughs> so at that point in 2014, we basically said, you know, a hit on my brother, you know, we have to become our own broker. And then we became our own broker. You know, we were completely wet behind the ears. We didn't. We have no clue how broker works. Uh, but some great guys trusted us, and from May 2014, we got an FCA license to be our own broker. We, you know, our, we put up the capital, we put up the resources, and and so on. And then we went, started being a broker. Yeah. And um, so the the thing with with being the the broker then is that. And I hadn't realized this because I'm not a trader myself, but I think I've learned two things about traders. So one thing is, you guys are paranoid. So when you speak to me, so you, you, I'll you, ask for that. you, you see, you see, the, you see this guy. So this guy is smiling, but he's trying to. Yes. So you know, there's a there's a built up distrust. Why is he telling me this? He's trying to one way or the other. So that's one thing. Mm. And I'll leave you to think, I mean, I'm, I'm all out, I'm telling you why I'm doing this. Okay, so th this is the video where I tell you why I'm doing this. So the first one is that one. And then the, the second one is a broker is a necessary evil. The <laughs> but I need to have a broker to hit the, the market. Precisely. Now, and we spent the last six years in this contradiction in terms, which is like a grocery marks. I don't want to be a member of a club that wants me as a member. Yeah. So we have had to become a broker for the reasons that I just outlined. Yeah. But a lot of people that, who come to us, they are predisposed to think that we're trying to the preconditioning. It's a preconditioning is, thing. Like, you know, these guys aren't the broker that are trying to this trade that went bad. It was my broker that did it. It wasn't my own, you know, bad choice of a, of a trade. It's unfortunate. I think it's just the Which industry. is unfortunate. No, it's, it's, it's our own failure to convey what Darwinix is about. Okay, so let, let me try and explain why and the reason we're doing all these videos and the reason that our organic, like our strategy to grow is organic. And, and it goes... Via recommendation. And it goes to the core of what Darwinix is. Okay, so... And I hope you believe it when I say this. So Darwin X is a crazy Spaniard's fool's dream of giving traders a fair shot. Okay. Yeah. And making that happen is awfully expensive. It's awfully expensive because we now have 50 employees and we could use another 30 engineers. We'll never have enough because, you know, you like this. Darwin manager terminal or whatever, you know, that cost, I don't know how many thousands of hours to build. Oh, yes. So, so, and, and, you know, and, and the guy, you know, for me to make it, you know, the, the guy that's speaking to you, I'm a father of four. And much as I love my job, you know, the, the schoolmaster and my thing, they charge, you know, a, an awful lot of money to get Everybody's my, my guests. So, them. you know, we have to make a, we have to make a living, but we're trying to make a living by building a trader movement which pools everyone's flow to get better trading conditions. Mm -hmm. We pool everyone's trading signal to, yeah. uh, to, to counterbalance the, the information asymmetry. The big guys know stuff that you guys don't, but together we can pool everyone's signal. Yeah. And then we've got a crowdfunding layer, which is the one that gives the best of us in the community the opportunity to make a living as this, whilst everyone else enjoys an ecosystem that is designed to improve every better like every every day by making its members better. Okay, so and and this ecosystem has built-in network effects in, in in startup jargon, and that is yeah. you know the alpha, so the good traders beget good investors, yeah. and investors beget better traders, and those traders at the top of our evolutionary Darwinian selection iceberg. Uh, they are the lighthouse for anybody joining with a 500 bucks account and no idea how to start. But then if you see that some guy is trading for the long run and making a couple of million bucks, yeah. then we will have put a stop to the made up boobs uh, t-shirt uh, industry. The so there's a, the Darwin X is, is a movement by traders for traders. And yes, it needs to make money. Now, where would you rather have the money spent? In 1,400 bucks to get a new headless chicken in the door and in you know and incentivize the guy to behave like a, like a headless chicken so we can make the money back and engage in this very very expensive game and I'm sure you'll show the economics of yeah. how many customers come in but how many customers churn and go away so instead of engaging in this kind of uh, doomsday 
bicycle ride where the moment you stop pedaling, the thing is dead, uh, which the fact means you become a meat burger factory where IBs bring you fresh cows and they go out with a, a piece of the hamburger. Yeah. Uh, so what we're trying to build here is a movement that builds critical mass and teaches other that there's another way. Now, up to now, the, the problem with the business model was if you trade peanuts, you make peanuts. Yeah. And the only way out of that was to lever, lever like 400 to 1. Now, we're trying to say trade 20,000 euros like they are 20 million on your Darwinx account. And then we will get you the 20 million all right. So you make 30% per year. You charge 20% success fee. Mm-hmm. That's 6% of 20 million. And 6% of 20 million, guess what, is you know, 1.2 million. So you know, it's a you, lot more than you have. You, you trade peanuts. <laughs> Yeah. And you make a bucket full if you do the right thing without, and, and by the way, you make investors happier as well because it's a profit exchange. Yep. And we cut all this lousy middleman of the gambling industry out of the way for a better Wall Street. And by the way, the lousy middleman of, um, uh, of thing is, this is not restricted to the FX retail industry. No, all of Wall Street is a lousy middleman that does yeah. a big disservice to society. And and I think what we're trying to do here is sharing these views. And if you believe in them, please, God, help us explain why we're doing this better than, than I do it. Because we need, the, the, you know, the more people there are in this, the more value it will add to everyone. In, in that way, we're a bit like the telephone company, right? Like the, the yeah. first guy who to own a telephone could basically do jack shit with it <laughs> the second guy could call the first guy yeah. the third guy could call the first two guys and at some point the more people have a telephone the more people enjoy the telephone mm-hmm. so and in this case the more people join darwin x the more people enjoy darwin x because it's better for everyone and you know you can ha- it's, it's a bit like having your own cake and eating it the only thing you still need is to put in the effort and the talent to make money but all the other stuff will I mean, trust me, and I'm really looking at the bloody camera. I'm putting my heart, soul, wallet, and everything into making this happen because that's what gets me out of uh, out of bed on a Monday morning. Okay, so thanks very much. And uh, I know this looked amateurish. If you have better ways to explain it, please God tell us (laughs) because you're speaking to a failure of a man who's spent the last six years doing this for the reasons just outlined and is perceived as a copy trading outfit uh, and a meta trader for broker. (laughs) I think a lot of our clients would disagree with the failure bit, but uh, point received. Well, you know, in that sense, you know, (laughs) this is a a big, you know, I think there's there's, uh, this movie I love, which is... What is the guy's name? Uh, the guy from The Great Escape, Steve McQueen. Mm. And there's a, and I don't, I, I don't know the title of, in, in Spanish it's La Leyenda del Indomable. So it's a guy who's locked up in Alcatraz. Ah, okay. And there's, a, there's, a, there's two epic sentences. One is, no one can eat 50 eggs, 50 <laughs> boiled eggs. And the guy goes ahead, he crosses the bed, and he eats the bloody 50, 50 eggs. Boiled. And, and the guy just he just won't get up, uh, give up. And and I think there's there's a sentence which was used for um, uh, Guns and Roses Civil War uh, uh, okay. song. It's like wow. what we've got here is failure <laughs> to communicate. <laughs> Some men you just can't reach. And 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 you know this is how I feel. You know I've, we've got this this message which I think is worthy of spreading, yes. and it's not spreading because. It, we have a failure to communicate, but we're trying to, like the broker is not an, an end in itself. It's a means towards a vision of leveling the Wall Street playing field for the sake of high street, for, for the real economy, not just for, and for the traders, by the way, but, but not for making money out of you and getting a boob job or paying for a lady with a boob job. Yeah, and I think this is also a good point to remind us all of the Derek Sivers a video yeah so that, that's the uh, thing so like the, what is the what is the organic growth strategy the organic growth strategy is the Derek Sivers video yeah. of how to start the movement the the loony in that video is my brother I was the first loony to embrace my brother and I'm very, on the, on the very, <laughs> very happy to, to you know to have been joined by 50 employees 3,000 happy customers we are working on the shareholding structure of the company because I think to preserve the vision in the long run, we should try to make our customers shareholders in this so that they're not sharing this because there's any money in it. They're sharing it because they are emotional shareholders in, in trying to build a fairer financial system, where you know, which is 
certainly meritocratic. This is not about, you know, this is not communism. You know, it's called Darwinex. It's not, you know, uh, <laughs> Winnie the Pooh next. But no. we, we give that guy in Russia a, a, the best shot at making a living. We're giving this Indian graduate from the Indian Institute of Technology in Calcutta a, a way to, to really look at Wall Street, I wouldn't say head on, but with a better fighting chance than anyone home has today. And, and that's what Darwinex is about. It's a movement about, you know, empowering meritocracy in financial markets. Brilliant. Thank you.